Algorithm's Netmon Freemium delivers real-time network visibility to quickly identify emerging threats in your IT environment. Netmon Freemium is a free commercial-grade network forensics and traffic analytics solution. You can use Netmon Freemium's powerful capabilities to search against all observed network traffic, identify abnormal traffic patterns in application usage, and quickly analyze full packet captures. Take the first step towards real-time network visibility. Visit logarithm.com forward slash freemium to learn more and download it today. NetSparker, the developers of desktop and cloud-based web application security scanners that enable you to automatically identify vulnerabilities in your web applications and web services. NetSparker scanners employ a unique and dead accurate vulnerability scanning engine that automatically verifies vulnerabilities with their proof of concept. For more information, visit them on the web at netsparker.com or email at contact at netsparker.com. IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. Access over 2,000 hours of up-to-date, high-quality video content live and on demand via your PC, mobile device, and more. For a free seven-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account, visit itpro.tv forward slash security weekly and use the code SW30. Welcome back, everyone, to Paul's Security Weekly. Real quick announcement, IT Pro TV's courses now include Exchange 2016, Wireshark, ECIH, and ECES. IT Pro TV is introducing a new membership level soon. The new standard membership is $57 a month or $570 a year and includes access to on-demand courses, uh, course library, live chat, and the QA forum. The new premium membership is $85.70 per month or $857 a year and includes access to all standard membership features and unlimited transcender practice exams, virtual labs, and access to the enterprise portal. Download courses with the uh, annual standard or premium memberships. I'd like to introduce for this segment uh, an update on the InfoSec Mentor Project. Uh, for that, we've mm -hmm. brought on Keith Hoodlett. Keith, welcome to the show. Thank you. Very glad to be here. <clears throat> now, Keith, very briefly, uh, what is your background in... Uh, you can talk about where you work and such, right? I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm allowed to. I'm okay. okay. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, I guess, uh, you know, how I got started in information security. Um, really, I've been a hobbyist for about the past 20 years. As a kid, I played Diablo, uh, Blizzard's title, and <laughs> I found that I could do unauthenticated uh, Diablo trial accounts to connect to Battle.net using Telnet. So I decided to create a visual basic front end and started my first botnet uh, spamming channels. So... That was kind of my foray into security as a child, and then growing up, I've, I've been with computers ever since. Um, but more recently, I was taking classes at University of New Hampshire, uh, then went to intern at Veracode before getting a job at a, a managed security services provider, um, and then finally now at Rapid7, uh, where I do customer success engineering. Awesome. And now, how did you get uh, involved with the, uh, well, I guess first, tell us a, a little bit about the history of the InfoSec Mentor Project. And I think, Jack, if you want to chime in on this one, that'd be great too, right? Because I believe it was born out of B-Sides. Is that correct? Jack, feel free to take that one because Jimmy knows more about it than I do, honestly. The uh, There were a couple of folks many years ago that started uh, Marissa Fagan, um, uh, who else was involved? But anyway, it, it, the first, uh, it, it didn't come out of B-Sides, but the first real splash was at B-Sides Las Vegas 2010, if memory serves. Uh, but nobody should rely on my memory. Uh, I, re I just remember that was the year that we had the, uh, the InfoSec Mentors panel on the beach at the uh, rental mansion. Uh, but anyway, yeah. And the idea then was uh, to connect people with some experience with people who uh, were trying to get into the industry or um, trying uh, to advance their careers. And it was great, but it uh, it sort of uh, took more manual labor, I think, uh, from the folks that were involved than, um, than they had available in the long term, which is probably a good tee up for where uh, Keith and Jimmy are now. Yeah, and, and that's actually pretty accurate to what Jimmy has told me. Um, from my understanding, it started in about 2009 and ran until about 2012. Um, and yes, Marissa Fagan, I think Wim Reams was involved as well. Right, right. Um, yep. And, and it, from what I understand, it was run as a very manual process. So I heard Jimmy talk about mentorship on a, a different podcast with Timothy D. Block back in about 2015. And I reached out to him and asked, hey, I'd really like a mentor. I'm, I'm taking some classes right now in computer science. I've been into security for a long time, but I don't really know where to get started. Um, so he, you know, we talked a little bit. He was really busy. He was at Rapid7 at the time. 
and uh, nothing really came of it. But last fall, I reached back out to him and I said, hey, did, did anything ever come of the mentorship project that you're looking to kind of recreate? And he said, not really. And um, for me, I've, I've been into development for a long time, and I was very interested in, in participating in some way. So I said, you know what? I need a mentor. I know there's a lot of people that I know that need a mentor. Why don't I build something? Uh, and then we just started from there. And so you developed software to basically help ease the manual uh, efforts that were happening to make this uh, mentor project happen. So what, what were some of the, like, what's some of the processes that you were automating uh, with the software to get people mentors? So the biggest part was uh, allowing a person to sign up and say, okay, I have at a, I'm at a certain skill level, but also there are people that I might want to be mentored by. So like for myself, uh, I consider myself now a security professional because I'm actually in the industry, but I'm very comfortable working with college students. So I was able to readily select, okay, what's the demographic that I want to work with? Uh, but then also start to talk about what are the skills that I can actually teach to. So a little bit of that is software development, a little bit of that is security engineering, uh, and also social networking. Uh, for example, I reached out to Jack just on Twitter, and I said, Jack, I'm trying to get this restarted. Can you give us some feedback? Uh, gave him a demo of, of what we had put together, and he gave some really great feedback that we're still working on actually putting together into the project itself, um, which actually brings me to a couple of other points if I can just make, I guess, two announcements for sure. it. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so the first one is uh, just actually, just before the show, I open sourced the code for the project. So anyone is welcome to go ahead and, and contribute to it and, and help build it because I know that there's definitely a need for mentorship in the industry and anything that can be done to help improve it is, is welcome and appreciated. Uh, and the second thing is that it's now open registration. So we've been in a pilot project for it uh, since about December 31st of last year, and now we're ready to go full open. So anyone can register on uh, infosecmentors.net. And so uh, when you say register, these are people who, <coughs> excuse me, need a, a mentor and people who want to do mentoring. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So not everyone is, is really required to um, to mentor per se. It's like we don't force people into it. But when you sign up, you sign up with three skills that you would be comfortable mentoring somebody else in and then three skills that you want to learn. Uh, one of the things is I put together a very I, – I consider it to be rudimentary in terms of a matching algorithm. But there's also like a suggested mentor to help you find and kind of sift through the people that already exist on the site and find someone that has the skills that you want to learn. And then you just request them to be a mentor. The site actually does a, a kind of a matching where it will email out to that party, ask them to confirm that they would like to be a mentor. And then if they confirm that, it will email you back saying, okay, here's the – contact email for the mentor you've requested, uh, reach out to them. And then if at any point you or the mentor wants to end that mentorship, there's a, a way to do that on the site itself. So what happens after, so it's kind of like a dating site then. <laughs> That's exactly it. I, I jokingly told Dimmy we were building Tinder for mentoring. Yeah. Uh, and, and more or less, it, that's kind of what it is, I mean, for lack of a better term. That's, that's pretty funny. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Can I, can I swipe right or swipe left? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't build that technology in because uh, I don't know any JavaScript. Uh, admittedly, when I was building it, I was familiar with Python, but I didn't know anything about any web frameworks. I didn't really know anything about JavaScript. I knew a little HTML and CSS. So I actually reached out to a friend of the show, uh, Apollo Clark, and I said, nice. hey, I'm building this thing, and I know you're a genius at web development. What would you suggest? And he was like, Flask is a really easy thing to use. <laughs> I knew so that I was, was coming. Cool. Yep. So I was like, cool, I'll, I'll do this in Flask. So uh, over the course of the last few months of last year, I've learned Flask, built out. It's a somewhat rudimentary site, but it's it's functional. It works. It does its job uh, efficiently and quickly, and it's not over-engineered. So, um, I, yeah, I kind of built it. I love that through this entire rekindle of the InfoSec Mentor Project, that you've actually taken mentorship from a number of folks to make this happen. Yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, it takes a village, right? So yeah. for me, being new to the industry, listening to this show uh, for the, at least the past five years, I, I knew there were people in the community that were willing to help, reached out, and lo and behold, they were exactly as expected. They were willing to help. So I've appreciated it a great deal. So, Keith, what happens after um, I, I find my, my match? <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, on your site, right? Like I found someone to mentor me, let's say. Like what happens after that? What's the process? So uh, basically, 
Yeah, I think Jeff was going to say something. What's that, Jack? Jeff? I, I just said candlelight dinners. Candlelight dinners. <laughs> yes. mm. So um, what we did is we offered a lot of different opportunities for connecting in terms of you, you put out your preference for connection, but effectively, so let, let's just say, for example, I reach out to Jimmy and I say, hey, Jimmy, I'd like for you to be my mentor through the site. He receives an email that says, hey, you've received a request from user one, which is me. And, and they then he says, oh, yeah, cool. I would like to be this person's mentor. And then he just affirms it through the site. It emails then me to say, Jimmy has actually accepted to be your mentor. Here's his email that he registered with. Contact him here. And then we stay out of it. And part of that is because we don't want to be responsible for um, kind of shepherding this process. We think that people should be able to engage in, start a mentorship, and then end a mentorship uh, in a very adult fashion. So. And not to be confused with a, a different kind of adult fashion. I gotcha. <laughs> no worries. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, do you have any guidelines on the site? As uh, like, it sounds like you're, you're making the match, but are there guidelines for what uh, should happen during that mentorship process? Or can you advise people who want to mentor or want to be a mentor, like what that means and, and the kinds of things that you should do together? In other words. So there isn't something that exists right now as part of the site, but Jimmy is actually working pretty hard on putting together a blog as a part of the site, so kind of like a, an additional add-on to help people with that process. Because um, this is something that I work with my mentor on quite a lot, is is we try to figure out, okay, is this mentorship going anywhere? What's our roadmap? What, uh, what are the outcomes that we want to achieve? Those are the kind of things that you have to think of. Because if you say, I want to have a mentor, but you don't really have a path that you want to take, you don't have a set of skills that you want to develop, then it's just a bunch of people talking, but not really talking about anything valuable. Right. Yeah, I, th I think those guidelines are an important uh, you know, part of that process. Um, so what are the, I know that the site's new, but how, like, how do you envision you and Jimmy both, uh, who Jimmy unfortunately couldn't be here, and he's a big fan of the Wu-Tang Clan, and so am I. So Jimmy and I, like, <laughs> yeah brothers in that sense but uh well he's on twitter he's always he picks up on the references that i make to to wu-tang clan but um so like what kind of things do you and jimmy want to happen as part of the mentorship like what are some of the things that you want the mentors and the mentorees is that a right way to say it mentor people being I mean, mentored we yeah, we, we call them apprentices on the site, but it, the other term that's commonly used is mentees. Um, I think that once you've come up with a roadmap, uh, ideally, I think that a person will have a mentor for only so long before it eventually becomes like a colleague or a friend that you can go to and rely on, and you move on to other mentorships. Uh, it's almost as though these people are just interactions as part of that, that process or that journey through your life. But some of the things that I would say that people should do at the outset is, is determine what are the goals? What are the outcomes that we're looking to achieve? And, and what's the timeline that we want to achieve them in? So, for example, with uh, my mentor, Casey, one of the things that we started with very early is I'm very interested in learning more about web application security. And he's a penetration tester. So for, for me, it was a matter of uh, first gauging where I was, how much I knew, how much I understood. And then from there, it's a matter of kind of walking through some of the basic processes that he goes through. And then uh, the outcome is now where we're actually working on a course together to develop um, basically attacking the mean or Mongo Express, Angular, and Node stack. And I'm learning JavaScript as part of that. So the outcome is eventually we'll have this, this course that he's hoping to teach. I'll help him build the site. And then I think at that point, um, I will probably move on to other mentorships, and he will probably move on to other apprentices. But uh, we become friends as a process. I see. So it's a you find a, a common ground on some particular project or point, um, and then basically it becomes almost a, a a friendship or a working relationship. And then you're like, oh, let's go find another mentor and and build relationships. I think that's great. By the way, thank you. Appreciate that. that. That's a great model, and I, I encourage everyone to. Um, to definitely go do that. So, uh, how are uh, how are you guys funding like this whole project? Like, what can people do to help? Sure. So uh, the first thing is right now where it's all paid for by us. I mean, I own the the .NET site. He owns the server, and we're all paying for it out of pocket. Um, one of the things that we're exploring is looking at a five hundred one c three, so nonprofit status, because we'd like for people to be able to contribute to the site, contribute to the project, so that it can keep going. Um, and, and hopefully have some sort of board structure around it so that way it's it's not just on Jimmy and my shoulders going forward. That's part of the reason we also wanted to open source the code is because 
at some point, I'm sure Jimmy and I will move on to do other things, but we want to make sure that the, the project itself will live on right. beyond our assistance. So here's my shock tank question for you, Keith. If you had money, more money, what would you do with it in terms of this project? Um, oh man, that's a good question. So, and he totally I, wasn't prepared for it. So, <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I think that um, first of all, I would make sure that we put some sort of down, like down payment or deposit toward um, maintaining the site in terms of the the actual .NET and the the server itself. I wanted to make sure. I would want to make sure that that would continue to be up and running um, beyond us. Other than that, I would like to actually start to see um, maybe send people to training or send send people to educational opportunities. Because honestly, the, the site itself is pretty rudimentary and it doesn't really need much in the way of funding. Um, ideally, I don't think that I would want to be leaving my current role where I am to to work on this full time myself. Because I part of the enjoyment is it's a project that I've I've worked on. It's not something that I do for my day to day. But at the same time, if there were people that wanted to come in and professionally develop and we could do like a Google summer of code to get some students to make it look a little nicer, uh, make that suggested mentor piece a little bit tighter in terms of the, the matching, um, I would certainly be happy to have some students come on and, and do that so that they could learn and contribute to the community. But, but also having training, <laughs> like a pool of training for people to pull from, uh, yeah. I think that's a great uh, addition to the site so that... The mentor is mentoring <clears throat> an apprentice, and the apprentice is like, oh, I want to learn about this. The mentor can say, oh, well, I can pull from this training class, and you can go take that, and then we can reconvene, and now you're starting from a more common ground, and you're helping them increase their skill level. Uh, I think that's an important thing that you could do with, with a little more funding. Absolutely. And that's something that I would love to see as, as part of this is being able to say, okay, I know this person, uh, for example, I mean, like with Casey, uh, I shortly after we started our mentorship, I went and bought the web application hackers handbook. Uh, little did I know it's like the Bible. I mean, like the thing is huge. Um, but it, it's one of those situations where I bought it out of pocket. And if I was maybe still taking some courses in college, um, I might not have been able to buy that readily, right? And so if there was a, a funding pool that a mentor could pull from to help educate their student, maybe it's getting them some time on Plural site or um, IT Pro TV, for example, uh, then it, it might be a good way to actually start using uh, additional funding that the project itself doesn't necessarily need to help people learn and, and gain that skill set a little bit more in a pointed way. I think that's great. Is there anything else you want to tell our audience, Keith, about InfoSecMentors.net other than to go there and register, whether you want to be an apprentice or a mentor or both? Um, Honestly, it's an open source code base. So if people have ideas or they see things that they want to help improve upon, please contribute. That would be really welcome. And uh, for me, I'm very big into teach a man to fish. So if there's something that I've done that could be done better, reach out to me on Twitter. Let me know. Um, I'm pretty active on there and, and it's the same as, uh, it's, it's my handle. It's the same as my GitHub page. So, um, people can reach out to me directly if they have feedback and they don't want to put it up as an issue ticket on the site. Um, but I, I'm always uh, eager to learn more. So as you have feedback, please let me know. Excellent. I get to use my metaphor here. So if you build a man a fire, he stays warm for a night. <laughs> If you set that man on fire, he stays warm for the rest of his life. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I've already lost my hair, though, Larry, so there's, there's less to work. <laughs> but there's the beard. So True. True. It's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Keith, uh, I want to thank you uh, mm-hmm. and, of course, Jimmy for spearheading this effort and in, in building something that uh, everyone can use. And you heard it. Did you hear it here first? Or I'm sure you announced it on Twitter, right, that it's open source code base. Anyone now can go to infosecmentors.net. Uh, you can be a mentor, you can be an apprentice, you can be both on the site. I strongly encourage our listeners to be involved with this project. Uh, we personally know the, the people involved, and it stemmed from efforts from Jack and others uh, in the security industry. So I'm, I'm glad to see it grow. Uh, and again, I, I want our listeners to start using it uh, and send us feedback, send uh, Keith and Jimmy feedback as well. And I think this is a great thing for the community. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about the security news for this week. Yeah. <laughs> 